Welcome to Behind the Scenes with your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV 1230 AM on the dial. Uh, you can view us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash aspects of writing and just click on the featured button. My guests for today's, shows are, for today's show is Charles Giocaris and the director of the Nevada Film Office and Ed Heron, uh, the assistant director. And in addition to that, Don Lewis Barnhart has joined us in the studio as well as a mm-hmm. co-host. Hello, Don. Hello, uh, James. <laughs> Uh, since this is a fairly new show, I would like to take the time to let you, the listeners, know that every other week we will go behind the scenes of the movies, events, shows, and more. Uh, we will talk to the people who bring it all to life, stagehands, artists, producers, directors, actors, dancers, writers, singers. Whew. Together, my <laughs> guests and I will take an informative <laughs> look at what it takes to produce what the world wants to see, as well as the history and how it all came about. Behind the Scenes will broadcast live here on KLAV every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, alter my other show, Aspects of Writing. Uh, thank you, Ed and Charles and Don, for being here today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to start with Charles. Charles, um, if you would, can you give us a little bit of your background and how you ended up at the Nevada Film Office? Sure. Uh, thank you for having us. You will. Uh, I actually started as a filmmaker. I began making films in Chicago and uh, started out uh, uh, there in the 1980s and actually ran into uh, the Chicago Film Office at work uh, one day. I saw them uh, a helicopter about to land on LaSalle Street and all this chaos and police cars and fire engines and the streets all blocked off. And I was, was like, who is doing all this? How can all this be done? And to me, it was fascinating. I knew behind the scenes how to set up, you know, to shoot and actually direct and everything. But I was wondering, how do you do all that logistical work? So I became very interested and in actually started working with the Chicago Film Office and then eventually came here to Nevada and took over the office in 1998. Oh, okay. And Ed, um, how about your background, and how did you become in- involved with the Nevada Film Office? Well, I have a wife at home, and if I don't say hi to my daughter, Gracie, oh, first, do. I'm sorry. <laughs> hi, pumpkin pie. I love you. So, so I had to get that out of the way to business. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait a minute. Pumpkin pie was my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my daughter and Don are both, are both nicknamed pumpkin pie. Thank you. Now, I started off in front of the camera, and then uh, I've always been uh, uh, very creative with writing. And I started off in Las Vegas actually writing a lot of commercials, but they were the cheesy kind of commercials. <laughs> I did uh, a lot of uh, cheesy spots in this town, but you know, um, they had a uh, they had a great shelf life, and it was Happy Harry and all those uh, <laughs> cheesy commercials, car commercials, and casino commercials. But um, I got involved with uh, the creative side, and then I came to the Nevada Film Office and joined Charlie, and we're really making a difference in bringing productions into the state of Nevada. And we thank you for that. And how long has the Nevada Film Office been around? Uh, it's been actually 30 years. Uh, it started uh, 1982, and it's uh, most film offices started in the 80s. It, it, every film, o- every state pretty much has a film office, okay. and they're all there trying to track you know business to their, their locales. And Nevada has actually one of the oldest, though. So. Okay. Um, and do you know who was instrumental in creating the film office? You know, it came from economic development, and I believe uh, uh, I really am not sure actually the, the person involved. But what was happening was uh, throughout the country there was kind of a, a domino effect. Uh, Colorado had the first film office. And then Illinois in, in 1976. I think what was happening was people in economic development at the different state levels realized this is something that uh, was very beneficial to the states to have an office in place trying to attract the productions because with it comes you know job creation and obviously uh, tremendous revenue as well as tourism benefits too. I don't think a lot of people realize that Nevada was actually the first site for the world's first big blockbuster movie. That's it was. Correct. It's the Corbett Fitzsimmons fight that happened in uh, Carson City, and who won? Nevada. It was Fitzsimmons. It was an <laughs> uppercut punch to the gut and knocked out the Corbett. I think in the fourteenth round. But it was a blockbuster for uh, for that time. I think there were three cameras on that shoot. For right at the time was a huge production. It played the Nickelodeon circuit. Yeah, it was a big hit around the country on the Nickelodeon circuit. And, and that was, was in eighteen ninety seven. Eighteen ninety seven. It did now gross Avatar though, so oh. the number is safe. <laughs> well, back to days times, maybe it did. <laughs> maybe <laughs> no three D. All right, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Behind the Scenes with your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. Uh, We can be heard live on the internet at 1230am.com on your computer, and we are streaming live on WordPress, Google+, Tumblr, Facebook, and YouTube. Just go to youtube.com forward slash aspects of writing, that's all one word, and click on the featured button on your player. Uh, My guests today are Charles Giocaris and Ed Heron from the Nevada Film Office, and Don Lewis Barnhart is here joining us in the studio as well. Yep. What's going on, Don? Well, with me personally? Yeah. 
<laughs> would you like to hear about my maybe not <laughs> <laughs> would you like to hear about my dog and our, and our nightly routine i think we just saw each other sunday on a show yes we did i've had more air time than a bird I mean, don, unbel- unbelievable he actually you have a show here on klev as well called behind the scenes with don lewis barnhart no, it's not called behind the scenes oh, behind oh, i'm that's sorry yours. that's mine i'm sorry don i'll rest no, that, uh, yeah, well, that's okay uh no, it's called Bring It On I'm with Barnhart. Barnhart at 6 o'clock on, uh, on Friday nights. Uh, what I've got going seriously is uh, we're trying to work up a film um, here in, in this town. It's called Vegas Wedding Blues. So obviously Correct. the film would not be shot in Fargo. <laughs> it'll be it'll be shot here in uh, Las Vegas, and we have plans. Hopefully, uh, we think the money is uh, forthcoming. Uh, which is always a disaster when it falls out. You guys know that. Um, and my partner, Skip Burrows, who is a, he will be functioning as the producer, and I'm functioning as the writer and director. And uh, the budget set. Um, we know who we'd like to have as a cast, and we figure that we can shoot the whole doggone thing right here in uh, in Las Vegas. That's music to our ears. Yeah, we, we love it. And uh, we're also going the musical route. Um, it's called Vegas Wedding Blues. Therefore, blues will be the, uh, uh, the, the functioning music all the way through it of one sort or another. And uh, obviously, there will be a song called Vegas Wedding Blues. Mm-hmm. And we got a band coming in, and uh, you know, it's a whole thing. And we're very excited about it. Um, whether we can uh, uh, take this over the fence is another story. But we think it's very close. Papers are being traded back and forth. And it, we're <laughs> we've been doing this thing for about seven or eight years and um, working on it and going through different uh, economic um, possibilities and crashes. And all of a sudden, it got real. And so that's where we are. Oh, that's, that's great. That's one of the things the film office loves to do is to hear uh, productions like that. And it's our job to make their life easier when they do come here to shoot or stay here to shoot in Nevada. Because we want to help them find crew, find facilities to uh, do their post. And uh, that's our job is to not only promote the state of Nevada as a film and production destination, but once they come in to shoot, to get them to hire locals and use local facilities. Well, that's what I was. One of the things I was going to ask you is the the role in the Nevada Film Office. I mean, I know that you can call and you can actually register your movie. In fact, I think it's required that if you're shooting in Nevada, you you have to register with the Nevada Film Office. That's well, correct. we're not yes. going to do that. We're just going to run around, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully somebody will you just, know just keep, tell them to their face, Don. Yes, <laughs> okay. We're going to do it, okay, boys? Gorilla <laughs> shooting. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. And we're going to wear camouflage outfits too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's important for people to know that you know, and it's free, I believe, to register. Is oh, that it correct? is free. Yeah, yeah. Right. and it's Thanks, not John. it's not a regulatory agency. I'm mean, just just a matter of uh, having records of who's shooting where. You know, we average about 400 productions that come in um, annually. So I mean, there's there's pretty much somebody shooting somewhere in the state uh, in some place. And because mm-hmm. we have so much territory, so much room here in the state, it's uh, it's quite interesting. We have people up in ghost towns filming, people on dry lakes, people at you know in Valley of Fire up in the Lake Tahoe area, and so forth. So, um, and our as Eddie was saying, I mean, we're here to help people. That's what film offices do. They really help filmmakers. On one end, we're trying to promote, obviously, bringing more projects here, trying to get as much production here because of the benefits, as I mentioned. But also, we enjoy working with filmmakers and helping them in all these different areas. And we just had a young uh, NY... Uh, film student, student, yeah. Yeah, uh, just called us yesterday. He's trying to get into an area up in northern Nevada to do some filming. And, and we, lo- we work with people with no budgets, students that have you know uh, just a student project. We work with the major feature films, uh, still photographers, uh, people shooting documentaries, industrials, music video people. So uh, for us, uh, it's really a joy for us to be able to help people and try to get them uh, cutting through red tape and, and getting them the ability to kind of you know get their, their dream on screen. And we are the Nevada Film Office, not the Las Vegas Film Office. So like Charlie said, we cover the entire state of Nevada. And that's one of the questions I was going to ask you. So I was, I was reading in your directory that um, there's a, a line between where it's, what's considered downtown and what's considered the boulevard. Because uh, I know there's filming on the boulevard where you don't necessarily have to have a permit if the hotel owns that part of the sidewalk or whatever? Or? Yeah, that's a little confusing for filmmakers, but we have great cooperation from the city of Las Vegas and also Clark County. And as you go south of Sahara, you fall into Clark County's jurisdiction. North of Sahara, you're into the city of Las Vegas. And uh, they're, they're really great people in both areas that help the filmmak- filmmakers out. And they kind of guide them as to like whose sidewalk uh, you know has jurisdiction. So you can, if you, if you are working with a property, a, a casino property, you'd have to kind of work with them if you're on certain areas. And then certain areas of the, uh, of the sidewalks are also 
part of Clark County itself. So uh, everybody kind of works together to kind of help you know the filmmakers. So it's really not that bad. Uh, it's a good thing that uh, Oscar is not the mayor anymore, because then you don't have to have him in the picture in order to, <laughs> <laughs> in order to film. He is in order to film. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're, you're you're going down. It's a shootout, and you got cars going here and there, and all of a sudden around the corner, here comes Oscar walking down the street. I mean, you don't have to do that anymore, do you? <laughs> well, he is a proud uh, SAG yeah. card he holder. Well, he card is. Yeah. He shows a SAG card to it. And he's quite good. He was good in CSI. He's, he's quite oh, yeah. good. No, he is Casino. Good. Yeah, Casino was a star. Uh, casino was great. But well. he's in everything. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to throw a question towards Ed. It, let's just say I'm an independent, um, want to shoot an independent film here in Las Vegas. What would be the process that you would suggest that someone go through to try and, and get that off the ground? Well, the, the first step is to call the film office. And, um, you know, like Charlie said, we love the big blockbusters, of course, but helping out the small independent filmmakers, I mean, we are very film friendly for all filmmakers. Like Charlie said, it's the college student who has no money or the small indie. And uh, we have very, very film friendly locations. So what we do is we um, take a script and we can do a script breakdown. We can help them find locations. We can help them with the permitting process, the insurance requirements getting cooperation from other uh, government entities like Charlie said and it's just our job to uh, to help these uh, filmmakers and that's what we want to do we want to help young filmmakers and we also want to incubate filmmakers in Nevada so all the projects are shot in Nevada that's what we want mm -hmm. and I know the film office does far more than just movies as a matter of fact um, probably there's more commercial shot here and you know things for the, in the behind the scenes with industrial and yeah and television we, we become like the king of reality uh, good or bad it's a, a situation that it's kind of <laughs> taken off to the point where it's, uh, I mean, everything is kind of set in reality-wise, but it, it's uh, it's still s production wise and it, uh, we call ourselves, I mean, it's the film office, but you're right, it's it's all types of productions and we've just, you know, with television uh, everything wants, uh, uh, so many of the networks and programmers they want to be, you know, setting projects here and it's exciting for them to have that set here. I think it's I think it's one of those things that uh, I like to say kind of gets the uh, uh, for, for them it, can, it gets them like a ratings kind of boost when it's you know got Vegas in the title and it's set here and it's uh, you know for them it's it's exciting and it's uh, yeah it's all those different types of production so uh, for us uh, one day we could be helping out uh, a major feature film from a studio. We have a studio right now uh, in town scouting a major uh, uh, a project that's going to be set for next year in, tw in 2013 and then we also had a young kid who just walked in the door uh, into our office a couple of days ago who has an independent feature film and uh, we sat down and we were helping him and he had no idea that we were you know uh, all of our services are free so we're able to help people and there's no cost for that that's fantastic Doc. and I understand there's a new reality show coming in called Swap Your Showgirl is that true? I have not heard Swap Your Show, girl. Oh. Don, was that a dream you had or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you go home and you have a Jack uh, on the rocks <laughs> and you have one too many and your dog Jack is uh, lying in the bed with you, uh, you know, your mind starts to wander. And, well, I, and I think it did on that one. <laughs> Needless to say, you can kind of get an idea what his scripts are about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. And he has four, so it should be interesting. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Um, how does Hollywood really play into the picture here? I mean, I know that for a long time, Vegas has been trying to get, you know, cooperation with Hollywood is filming. And we have 300 days of, of great weather for, you know, to be filming in. So how, Charles, how would that play into the picture with Hollywood. Well, Hollywood's here right now filming a major uh, film with uh, Michael Douglas and Matt Damon about the life story of Liberace, and the uh, one that's scouting that I mentioned is here also. It's a major studio uh, with us this week scouting for, for the production in 2013. So Hollywood is here. Uh, they've been here in the past, and it's uh, a situation I think they'll be here in the future. Our uh, close proximity to Los Angeles is a huge benefit. I mean, they're able to fly stars in very quickly. They're able to you know move very quickly since we're so close to them. Uh, in terms of like additional projects, obviously we'd like to have every project uh, but it's a situation where it's very very competitive with different states and even countries and we were just in Los Angeles on a sales trip and uh, talking to some of the locals in Los Angeles and they were complaining that there was really nothing going on in Los Angeles so many of the projects that are leaving Los Angeles so we're happy when we get uh, the projects that we do and uh, again we uh, we are greedy we want as much as possible and we're, Absolutely. Very, we're a very proactive office much more so than most film offices most just kind of wait for the phone to ring we uh, are very proactive with trade shows we're out around the country trying 
trying to meet filmmakers, young, old, it doesn't matter. We're trying to plant seeds for the future. Oftentimes, we'll get a phone call, like Eddie just got recently, where a, job, a producer said, you know, I met you guys two years ago at a, at a trade show event. Now I have my funding. Now I'm ready to go. So we love to hear that. And we put together some great materials that uh, we uh, put out in terms of, uh, you know, our production directory materials that really are our calling card to kind of get uh, the industry very interested in coming here. And it's promoting everything really beyond the neon, too. We have so many beautiful locations that uh, once they find out we have beyond the neon, it's, it's great, too. We even attend a trade yeah. show for writers. Uh, it's called uh, Ink Tip to get them to write about Nevada. So that's how proactive our office is to attract productions to the state. Yeah, no other film office does that. And you probably have a big following worldwide, too, as far as people interacting with you, like Toronto, which is huge in films now. And uh, the UK okay. and Asia, yeah. yeah we, we, we have a lot of foreign productions that come in, and uh, they like the ease of filming here. And uh, again, it's a, it's a thing where we see a lot of repeat business from uh, the foreign markets. And Don, did you have a question? No, no, I'm just, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking I'll, about I'll, I'll Jack wake, Daniels. I'll wake you up. <laughs> I'm, just, sure, uh, sure. I'm just, yeah, well, just keep, keep nudging me there, Jimmy boy, because I love you when you nudge. <laughs> um, all right, so we already discussed the fact that television and documentaries are a key role here. Um, when it comes to um, shooting your independent films here, I, I think there's probably a huge increase in independent films in, recently in the last few years. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, the the uh, equipment, because it's become so uh, uh, affordable for young filmmakers. When I was making films, my God, I mean, shooting on film, you don't have to shoot on film now. I mean, so it's, it's something where they can get cameras now cheaper and they're able to go out and shoot. And it's uh, it's fun for them. It's uh, You can tell the excitement. And they're coming up with so many different story, you know, story ideas and storylines. And uh, we encourage uh, and really enjoy the young filmmakers, as we mentioned, especially the independents. And, and a lot of times, as we mentioned with the uh, New York uh, student, we see a lot of student filmmakers wanting to come here and use you know Nevada locations because they've written something specific for us, which kind of brings us to the fact that we have the oldest screenplay competition of its kind in the country. Oh, wow. Uh, and it's uh, one that's going in its 25th year. And we ask people, uh, they, they write from around the world, and it's a, a situation where they have to write. 75% of, lo of the locations have to be written for Nevada. So we have people all over the world writing about our state, which in, in turn, of course, uh, it has more attention you know, being paid to, uh, to our state. And a couple years ago, I think a kid from London won the, the contest. Yeah. Who wrote about Area 51, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a sci-fi thing. But they write about the ghost towns, and they write about the you know the gambling stories, and uh, uh, obviously uh, you know a lot of fun things. And I believe it's free for uh, Nevada residents. It is free for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, that's residents. fantastic! Yeah. yeah. How involved are you with the show, pr the big productions that go on in town, like let's say Phantom or V at Planet Hollywood, or? We really don't have much to do with um, those types of uh, shows, although some of the uh, professional crews that work on films and other productions kind of work both sides. They can work uh, stage as well. So, uh, But no, we really don't have much to do with uh, those types of productions. Yeah, the only thing we see is that sometimes the producers, the people of the shows will call for our production directory because it lists all the technical people uh, in the industry, yeah. and they do cross over in that area because we have all the lighting companies, all the people that do props, all the people make up, and so uh, the is that nice crossover uh, for that part. Okay. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Behind the Scenes with your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. Um, we, we are live on the internet at klav1230am.com and on your radio, 1230am on the dial. Um, my guests today are Charles Gio Karras and Ed Heron and Don Lewis Barnhart. And Don, do uh, you have anything to add right now? <laughs> <laughs> I expected that. <laughs> uh, do I have anything to add? I was thinking about what you said. I think it was Eddie that uh, brought this up. Uh, I could be wrong. It could be Charles. But nevertheless, uh, there are people coming in from Los Angeles uh, working here because uh, obviously, I mean, I'm talking crews. I'm talking about you know construction folk and, and makeup and hair. And they're moving here. They're living here. Um, and there's a quite a quite a few, and they bring a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to. And one of the blessings, if you're doing a, a picture here, which like I said, my partner Skip and I are trying desperately to do, um, they live here, which cuts down on a lot of other stuff, which is hotels per diem, per diem. and per diems and, and, and things of that nature, which saves the budget 
a whole bunch of money. Oh, absolutely. That's a great point. And really I is. think that uh, the director of the picture should s- scarf on that, you know, should take some of that money uh, away from them and use it for my own self. That's, <laughs> that, that's, that, was my, that was my intent, but I guess I couldn't do that and they're going to fire my butt. So No, it's a, it's a great point. I mean, uh, we no, tell people or yeah. tell productions when they come here, all they need to do is just bring themselves. We have great professional crews here. We have great uh, uh, production facilities, post-production facilities. We have great camera crews. We have really everything you need. So uh, we tell crews just to bring themselves. I would imagine that uh, when we get ready and the and uh, the money is in the bank and you know we go through all that, I'm sure Skip and I will be uh, paying you guys a visit. Well, we look forward to it and go from there. You know. I, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up also was the the SAG. How does SAG play into the film office? Well, we, we really, uh, you know, a film office has some misconceptions. I think everyone thinks that, you know, we uh, have a lot to do with actors. We really don't have much to do with actors. We do have a hotline. It's uh, 702-486-2727. And some actors can, um, you know, can look there for some information on if there's any kind of go-tos or anything like that. But to be uh, honest, we really don't do much with actors. In our production directory, which we talked about, which is sort of like a yellow pages for producers and directors when they come in from out of town to shoot, we do have a list of casting agencies, casting directors, casting facility, casting notices, talent agencies, and people can find the talent on there at our directory or online at NevadaFilm.com. But as far as Hey, can you get me a you know job as an extra, or can you get me uh, a job in the Don Barnhart you know story you know starring him? Uh, <laughs> starring <laughs> Don Barnhart. Starring Don Barnhart. Don Lewis. Don Lewis Barnhart. Don Don Lewis Barnhart. Lewis. Oh, sorry Let's about that. No, 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 no. But but I, I only say that because I have a son who's a stand-up comedian, and he goes by oh. Don Barnhart. Oh, okay. So I'm just differentiating because some people are you <laughs> no, get it's confused. True. So. But uh, no, uh, we cannot help you get a role in the next movie, but we. We do have our production director that helps these actors find work. Yeah, a lot of people think that uh, the film office is that it's it's the talent end of it, and it's really not. It's more the production end of it. Okay. Except for the the fact, that, as Eddie mentioned, you know, the talent agencies, casting agencies. Well, they certainly have a wide variety of of choices yeah. of people, you know, and uh, when you, it's almost like one stop shopping in a way. If the producers and directors and whomever uh, use that uh, facility the, and the knowledge that you guys bring to it, um, that's, that's a blessing because you can say, well, this is what I need. That's what I need. I need it here. I need it there. And then you guys, you know, instruct uh, the, the producer people to go out and find it. I mean, to go out and get them. Yeah. And, and, and it's all about money. I mean, I mean, come on. Right. I mean, if, if I've got the money, you've got the experience to point me in the right direction. Exactly. If I don't have the money, then we're all just spinning wheels here. And you go on to the next guy because that's what your job is. My job is to come up with the money and then shoot the picture. Everyone and thinks making the film is the hard project, but funding it and then distribution, oh, those well. are the tough parts. Yes, it is. What would you suggest for someone trying to fund the project? Where would you suggest they go? Don Lewis Barnhart. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good answer. I mean, it was very quick. Um, and his dog. And well, his dog, Jack. My dog is going to be in the picture, too. Free, awesome. of course, but he will be in the picture. <laughs> well, I will say this. Uh, Charlotte Evans had a young man on this morning who shot an independent film here in Las Vegas. And one of the things he did is he went to Kickstarter to actually get funding for the independent film. And I was going to ask both Ed and Charles, do you have any experience with how they go about that? I mean, uh, you know. I have not. I mean, there's there's new uh, funding sources like that springing up all over. Mm-hmm. And I just actually was talking to somebody about it a few weeks ago. That that's uh, an area uh, where people were talking about trying to get grants in that. That it's a situation where you know uh, some of these new sources, like the one you mentioned, are very beneficial for the independent filmmakers. But as Eddie mentioned, I mean, it's it's you know being in those shoes and and trying to put that piece together is is really the hardest part. And even you know accomplished directors like Albert Brooks, I was reading not too long ago on one of his films. He you know he's directed so many wonderful films over years you know he had to go and try to find the funding and you know it put the pieces together for him to direct the film so uh, it's a situation where it really is is still the hardest part well as you well know there are so many deal breakers in this business that we're in uh, you get a director a new director and and he's got a great script and he goes down to um, let's pick one uh, Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers says you know this is a great script we really like it where are you going to shoot it well we're going to go up to Nevada 
Okay, um, and we can save a few bucks there. Um, but uh, you, you say you're going to direct it? And he says, well, that's what I plan on doing. I, I wrote it. And he says, no, we got a director that we want to use. Oh, yeah. And uh, and you say, well, wait a minute. I mean, I wrote the doggone thing. Uh, give me a shot at it. And I've directed television. I've been around the block. I've parked in a couple of garages, actually. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> You know, you're going to take this down the line, are you? <laughs> anyway, so, you know, they, they make a deal breaker. They say, well, if you want your film made, somebody else is going to direct it. And the poor guy is now sitting in a, in a cabin somewhere, you know, threatening yeah. suicide because he wrote the picture and, you know, they take it away from him. So it's a fight. It's a continuous fight no matter really what side you're on. And if you're the higher up you go, the easier it is for them to bust you out. So, I mean, you know, guys that like you that, you know, kind of fight for the production team and things like that can, is very beneficial. Well, we appreciate you saying that. I you mean, know. Charlie and I are very, very passionate about trying to bring production into the state of Nevada as well as the entire staff of the Nevada Film Office. Um, so we appreciate hearing that from you. Well, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's really difficult. This is not an easy business. People think, well, you just make a picture. You know, okay, well, we'll just make a picture. Now we got to get the money. Big mouth. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I'll go out and get the money. You know, and they say, "Well, uh, who are you?" Well, I'm Don uh, Lewis Barnhart, not Don Barnhart. There we go. Yeah, Don Lewis Barnhart. <laughs> Fine, gotcha. You directed many, many, many television shows. Yes, I did. You worked with Robin Williams. Yes, I did. And he spit on me. But that's another story, and we'll talk about that later. But the point being is you got the experience. You know, a director is a director is a director is the way I look at it. And uh, the picture may have big action scenes, which you would go out and get action director, you know, second unit, and do all that kind of stuff. But uh, but the, but me, as, as trying to, you know, do my movie is very difficult, and we fall on your graces. I mean, we really do, because if we tick you off, we're nowhere. You know, I mean, <laughs> we can get it done, perhaps, but I mean, we're still... Yeah, he's from Jersey. So. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, well, it's, shoot. It's, there, there goes that. Oh, there I'm goes scared now. Oh, gosh, Eddie is <laughs> from Jersey. I've got a bat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling him pumpkin pie anymore. <laughs> so are, are we going to see it. your picture down at the Mom Museum someday? Or? <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to take a short break here right now, and then when we come back, we're gonna, we are, I'm going to bring up the, the topic of funding again, and I'm going to share a show that John, uh, Don and I shared at once with someone who actually got her her funding through crowdfunding oh okay. all right mm -hmm. we'll talk about that Welcome back, everyone. If you're listening to Behind the Scenes, with, you are listening to Behind the Scenes with James Guy, I hope. Uh, here on I, love it, I love it when you drink. <laughs> Don went and got us some Jack while we were on board. Yeah, God, <laughs> bless. God bless the Jack. <laughs> we can be heard live here on, um, on KLAV 1230 AM on the dial and also at KLAV 1230 AM.com on your computer. And again, we do stream live on YouTube. Just go to YouTube.com forward slash Aspects of Writing, all one word, and click on the Feature button and you can see us in the studio. Um, my guests today are Charles Gio Karras, and we also have Ed Heron and Don Lewis Barnhart. Hello, Don. Hello. <laughs> I was going to start applauding, but and I think it's a little pumpkin? bit late, huh? Uh, it's pumpkin, right? Oh, that my daughter's oh. is pumpkin pie. And, oh, and oh, I, I thought like, Don was pumpkin pie. Pumpkin no, I'm more like <laughs> 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 radish something. I have no idea. All right. Ed and Don are here for the Nevada Film office, and I wanted to ask them what is exactly is in your directory. What would what's the purpose of that directory? Uh, the purpose is to really showcase the great people that we have and the great uh, vendors all throughout the state. So it's a listing uh, of all of the people, everything from A to Z, from from uh, uh, people that provide any kind of services to the industry. And for a producer, it's like a yellow page. So it's the first thing that they want to use um, when you go into any state. Pretty much, you're looking for that state's production directories. You can find the available talent. And as Don mentioned, when you you can go into an area and not have to bring all those people. That's a huge benefit for your cost savings. So having having a, a, a listing of all the individuals for producers is, is a key. And for us, we love the, the idea that it uh, gets a lot of people business. It brings a lot of business to our vendors and, and individuals. Well, I mean, you know, I said that. You know, I said that. <laughs> but, you know, I've put my life in jeopardy. You know that. Because if I go to California, I'm dead. <laughs> You know, trying oh, to get all these <laughs> people to stay up here <laughs> and move. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm dead. I'm gonna say, what are you doing? Yeah. You say, what happened to Don <laughs> Lewis Barnard? <laughs> he said, well, they hung him in prim. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Now, we understand a certain, uh, you know, 
point they're going to bring a lot of keys into because our proximity to LA helps us uh, obtain a lot of production or get a lot of production so they're going to bring in some keys but we want them to hire as many locals and use as many local vendor services as possible and I think what's important is in your directory just so people will know if you're trying to get an independent film off the ground and if you certainly if you just move to the Las Vegas area you need to understand with the film office you, you're going to have a whole list of producers from line producers to everything you have your, your um, casting crew you have a lighting um, grips gas Agents, catering, craft services, Makeup. honey wagons, whatever you need. Where can they get that directory? Uh, they can get it by uh, uh, phoning us at uh, 702-486-2711 or coming by our office, which is at 6655 West Sahara, and it's in Suite C106, and it's available for free. And if you uh, want to call, uh, we'll definitely be happy to mail one out to you. And it's also available online. We have an electronic version at uh, www.nevadafilm.com. Okay. And just so um, everyone will understand, if you've been here a while, like I used to think the film office was down off of North Las Vegas Boulevard. Boulevard. You've recently moved to this location. Uh, that's that's correct, James. Yes, we just moved on May 1st uh, out a little bit west, and it's uh, a great location for us. And we're finding with filmmakers and people in the community, it's uh, more convenient for them. So it's something that's been uh, uh, real beneficial. And getting back real quick to the director, like Eddie was saying, it's, it really is. It's the key key number one item, um, and and it's uh, it's it's really the first thing that they're using. And when we go to the studios, when we go on any sales trips, uh, and any of the big trade shows, it's distributed by the, by the hundreds to to individuals so that they're able to find uh, everything they need. And uh, we're going to go off topic just a little bit to talk about funding. And the reason I'm doing that is, is because there's a lot of independent film um, people trying to get something going and don't know how to get the funding. And with today's internet, you can actually go out on the internet and you can find crowd, what's called crowd funding. And Don was on a show with me where we had a young lady on named Jocelyn Towns. And Jocelyn is in L.A., but she actually went on Kickstarter and she had someone who was going to do angel financing. And angel financing is someone who will match the funds that you get. So because it's a small independent film she put her project on Kickstarter and raised a hundred and eleven thousand dollars Wow so that actually gave her you know two hundred and twenty two thousand dollars to now shoot her independent film That's and actually that film is in post-production awesome. right now and will be released next month awesome so and she did all this from Kickstarter and to understand what crowdfunding is crowdfunding is when you put your project out there and you say I'm I'm not looking to sell anything but what I'm doing is I'm looking for funding will you donate and you can donate five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and every time you donate something, if it's twenty dollars, let's say you might get a copy of the DVD when the when the film's finished. Uh, for fifty dollars, you may get a mention, you know, for having donated to the project, and it just goes on and on from there. And the, probably the two biggest out there right now on the internet is Kickstarter.com and Indiegogo.com, and anybody can can set up a funding site. It doesn't. You don't have to have any credentials, you know. But the problem with it is the only problem I foresee, and this. Is just for some people. You have to be very aggressive because you have to go out there and get your friends and family involved to get that funding and let people know on your Facebook or wherever that you're doing this project. Otherwise, who's going to come and donate the money? And um, with Kickstarter, you do have to meet your goal. You set a goal as to what you need. Like Jocelyn had a $100,000 goal. If, had she had not met that $100,000 goal, she would have gotten none of the funding. Mm. But if you do it with Indiegogo, they offer you both options. Where you keep what you get or you go for a goal. So just so the, for the, this is just for the independents out there. And this isn't just for films. This is, Don and I are both authors as well. This is for authors as well if you're trying to produce a book or whatever. And then when you get the funding for your project, please call the Nevada Film Office, <laughs> and they'll help you. I knew this was going to lead into yeah, somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. I had a Kickstarter program in my home when my former wife said, you get out there and you do something, and I'm going to kickstart you right out the front door. <laughs> and, and that was about uh, as close as I got to a kickstarting program. <laughs> so I just stayed home and wrote books, and it seemed to turn out all right. Now, those avenues you mentioned are outstanding for independence, and mm. it's something that uh, I wish was around uh, many years years ago when, when I was making films and looking for you know ways to, uh, to do that everything you know with the internet now has changed Absolutely. completely you know even distribution now you're able to now have somebody you know shows that are being viewed 
in, in many different areas. Well, in the film festivals. I sure. mean, that, how, how involved with the film festival are you, or at all? Yeah, it depends really on how uh, they want to interlink with us. I mean, there's like over 15, I think, in the state right now, everywhere. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. There's so many. I mean, they're, they're north, south, everywhere. Uh, and some really want us to be active in it, and some uh, want to just kind of go, go off and do their own thing. And uh, a lot of times we help them just mainly publicizing the event. Yeah, we uh, help them publicize, and uh, we would really love to, you know, have uh, some of them that showcase Nevada filmmakers. I mean, that, that's what we want to uh, yeah, I think a lot of behind. Yeah, I think a lot are starting to do that now, and, so. and it's one of those situations where if, if they want uh, uh, that publicity we have between our hotline and distribution areas, we're able to kind of get the word out for, for them to kind of spread the news. And we have a section on film festivals in our directory, which is also online. It kind of hot links them for free and kind of puts that information there. That's fantastic. That's quite a directory you have, by the way. I oh, mean, thank you very much. That's a pretty thick directory. Thank very you very nicely. Much. Well done. Wow, we so, appreciate it. Um, and I'm just curious, can you share any experiences you've had <laughs> with any of the movies that have t taken place here in Las Vegas as far as anything maybe humorous or... We're asked that a lot. It's it's so much of it is confidential. I mean, it's a situation where... We don't uh, want names. We yeah. Just <laughs> no, no, no. We want <laughs> names. Well, Don wants names. But <laughs> no, there, I, I think a safe one um, was the show Las Vegas that had the donut shop. Oh. Um, and it, there was, a, I guess, a donut shop where the girls were not wearing tops. Okay. The waitresses. Yeah. The waitresses that served the donuts. And we got quite a few phone calls from people looking for this donut shop that Man. doesn't exist. It was yeah. from the TV <laughs> show. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, men from around the country. So calling. it just goes to show the power of uh, of, of television. Make or believe or donut holes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was a kind of a funny story. But, yeah, I can't, I mean, production-wise, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any real fun antidotes, unfortunately. Don, what about Don you? Well, I, I don't have the antidote. I'm not talking about that right now. I did. I kind of wanted to revisit the funding part okay. of it because I was directly involved with my partner uh, for the last seven years. I wrote the I wrote the script, the Vegas Wedding Blues thing, about seven eight years ago, and it's been rewritten and rewritten and rewritten and updated and rewritten and punched up and and every time we would do that, even bef even without rewriting. We would have meetings with people who claimed they had funds, you know, and and some of them I knew firsthand did, and they they were they were lawyers and they were doctors and, you know, we could have put together a group of folk and make it you know pretty neat, but recession hit, and um, all of a sudden everything dried up. Now it's kind of coming back, and we got a handle on. Uh, on, on people that uh, there seem to be interested in the storyline. But I just, my, my point would be to anybody listening, and I would assume that there are quite a few to this uh, particular topic, and learning from you guys especially, yeah. um, that uh, you never give up. You just never, ever, ever give up. I don't care how bad off you are. I don't care if you have, you're living in a trailer, but keep that script with you at all times and make sure that when you have a down period and you're not down yourself, then go ahead and do another little pass at another rewrite. You know, because um, you, you never know who's going to walk in it's and, great and, advice. and read it. Yeah, it's, it's true. true. Uh, the, the gentleman who wrote Ocean's Eleven, I, I remember um, going on the original Scout for that particular feature film, which was a huge success. Steven Soderbergh and George right. Clooney Absolutely. and Matt Damon and Brad Pitt. Um, and the writer of that uh, uh, feature film uh, had a very interesting story. He said that uh, about six months ago he was living with his mother. He was living in the basement on the couch and uh, he got his script in the hands and eyes of the right people and then it went on to be greenlit of course and then his life changed and um, he pointed out to me just what Don was saying that you know I didn't give up. I, st you know, I, I stuck with the uh, with trying to find uh, the right vehicle for me, and he found Ocean's Eleven, which was a pretty good vehicle to jumpstart a career. So, Don's right. Don't give up. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a certain philosophy about that. If I may interrupt, uh, sure. Jim, um, it's true about clicks, and it's true about you know uh, if you're a writer. And one of my main uh, uh, my main things about life in this entertainment is industry is writing. And if you were a writer, uh, if you're not down meeting the right people, chances you are you're not going to get your script in anybody's hands that, that are going to make a difference. And uh, we learned that lesson. And um, you have to you have to 
you have to tie yourself in with people who know what they're doing and will take a chance on you. Or you go out and independent fund it and you're taking a huge risk there too. For distribution afterwards. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. yeah. And you got the P&A and you got all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff you got to sure. pay for. In case of festival. Oh, gee whiz. Or not, depending yeah. on how good the thing turns out, you know. And if you get lucky, you get lucky, but most people don't. And uh, you, you got you to gotta know that. You got to know. If, and I'm talking to a writer now sitting at home at a computer going, well, the show is really good, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, what you have to do is you have to find and search out a good agent. I mean, you really have to do that. Um, you should do that. If you do it independently and, and nobody cares, you know, you're going to get what money you get and you're going to do it. So it's a, it's a tough business, but don't give up. Right. Yeah, the other thing I would say for writers, if I can jump in, would be the Writers Guild of America is a great source for people in their website. And, and the event that we were part of uh, that Eddie mentioned recently, the Ink Tip Summit, was excellent because it uh, they ha actually had a pitch session in there for writers. So people were able to get in front of producers with ideas. And yeah, I think as a writer, you have to get creative, like Don was mentioning, in terms of how to, how to get ahead of your competition and how to kind of get your idea out there. And you can't just sit on your couch at home and expect you know somebody come calling you saying I want to make that film that you have in your computer you, you have to get that out there so the nice thing about our screenplay competition is the winner what we do for the winner is we send it out to production companies for that visibility and it's first of all it's read by we have professional readers that do the judging of it in Los Angeles it's a reading service so these people are already you know some of these people work at you know studios some of mm -hmm. these people are tight in so they're all reading about all the different topics and then we have um, uh, then we have, of course, the, the, the advantage of uh, trying to get it out there in a production company's hands, and that's, that's a real thing. Trying to get the foot in the door for the local writer is, is, is the big thing that's for that. Great. Well, that's great. Well, and that's, you know, if I may interrupt also, again, I'm sorry, but it, it's also very important, uh, I think, to, uh, to attach yourself to a representative that can get you into that door. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you go down in Hollywood and walk around to the so-and-so and so and so you're not going to get in. They're just not going to put you in the studio. You're not going to. You're not even going to come close, and uh, unless you are, you know, dating the secretary of, you know, the production ahead. But most of the time, you're not going to do anything. So what you have to do is come in with a script that's so good, and so sharp, and so doable, that they say, I can't. I can't resist this kid, and that's the agent talking. Right, then and that's the key too. It's yeah. hard just to yes. get in the door with an agent. Yes, and uh, and you come in with a script that's just fabulous, and the agent's going to be stupid if he doesn't take that, and he may you know mess around with you as far as your lack of experience. And again, talking to somebody home typing, um, once once you convince him that you got it to do to to, to do the long run, if you can do that, and you got a sharp uh, script that's sharp. There's no stopping you. Well, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Behind the Scenes with your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. We can her be heard live on the Internet, 1230am.com, KLAV1230am.com. Uh, we stream live on WordPress, Google+, Tumblr, Facebook, and YouTube. <laughs> My guest is Charles. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mouthful. It's Charles I just want to know and good. I know good. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Don Lewis Barnhart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to regret the day that I ever brought that up. I'll stick with pumpkin pie, please. <laughs> My poor Gracie. <laughs> well, one of the things... Go say hi for uh, uh, hi, hi, Gracie. <laughs> uh, and uh, did you guys know that, that fried, green t fried green tomatoes took 20 years to get it into producers' hands? I, I can believe Fanny it. Fanny Flight took 20 yeah. years to get that book into a producer's hands. I was going to say, it's just, uh, to me, it's, uh, it's amazing when you see, see people like at the Academy Awards saying, I've worked... All you know, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, wrote this and have been you know trying to get the funding and trying to get it, and it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a battle and it's uh, we're eight years with this one. You're eight years wow, already. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I have a friend who just who wrapped on a movie. I guess it's been over a year or so now, a couple of years ago, and it was by uh, um, Oliver Stone's son. He he produced the movie, and it's still sitting there waiting for distribution. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, so it's what's uh, I think people don't comprehend just how many films well, are made and are still waiting to get distributed. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of. Uh, 
patty cake going on. You know, there's people that you know that can take that movie and, and, and get it out there and distribute it. And then there's people who are just hanging on to it, use it as tax write-offs, use a, you know, a lot of stuff that's, that, you know, makes a poor filmmaker going, what in the, and I'm going independent. I'm going in, screw these studios. I'm going to go independent. And they come up and they do this thing and they, 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 they take the monies, uh, what they got, and they make a film. And they're very proud of it. Well, I think... You still have to get distribution. Right, and I, I, I personally believe that the independent films are changing the industry right now um, because it, we have a lot of major motion pictures that are actually based on an independent film. Like you get discovered at a, uh, at a film festival mm -hmm. and a studio can say, let's take and make this a big feature. So I think if, if you've got the courage, you know, you definitely should think about going out there and doing independent if you're not getting discovered some other yeah, way. Yeah, we love the independent films, and, and I'll tell you what, uh, I mean, they don't make movies for people our age. Well, I, I'm 22, but you guys are a lot older. <laughs> thank, 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 thank you. But, uh, you know, they're making these movies, the Spider-Mans and the Iron-Mans and the, I don't know how many mans there are, Supermans, oh, whatever, and they're yeah. all for 13 to 15-year-old kids, so to find a movie, uh, you know, with, with great dialogue and, and shot well is, is, a hard, is hard to find. That's why we love the indies. Yeah, and we should, you know, um, in Colorado, they recently had that shooting that took place at the movie theater for Batman when it was released, and we should offer our condolences to those people out there. You know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yes, and, and how can someone in the industry get listed in the Nevada um, Film Office's directory? Uh, they could just, the same as uh, obtain it, they could just call us at 702-786-2711. Uh, and as of Monday, we're having a, a, a relaunch of our website. It's going to be a new look to it and everything, and we'll have everything available online. And that's at nevadafilm.com. You can actually register online. All the information will be available uh, for any filmmakers and any individuals that want to have uh, you know the ability to be in the directory. And it's a perfect time because we're signing up pretty soon now for the 2013 hardcover edition. That'll be uh, the cutoff date for that is September 28th. Is that a yeah. coffee table version? <laughs> <laughs> the coffee table, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's I'm right. sorry, Charles. I, I just can't resist them. Well, I was trying to get your your nickname uh, in there somehow, but I, I don't know if I should. <laughs> yeah, well, out of this, out of this studio, pumpkin, pumpkin Lewis pie. pie. Yeah, out of the studio, pumpkin <laughs> Lewis pie. That's sorry. funny. That's very funny. Out of this studio, I get called pumpkin pie. We're gonna have a <laughs> we're gonna have a come to Jesus meeting on that. <laughs> yeah, you'll be going by, and someone will go, "There's ghost pumpkin pie, or is that pumpkin head?" <laughs> <laughs> My poor Gracie sitting at home going, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, gentlemen, uh, this is for Ed and Charles. Do you have anything new coming along down the pike for the Nevada Film Office? or? Any well, I think we mentioned some of the, the, the we had that studio the filming studio, uh, scouting right, scouting right yeah. now for next year, and then uh, we have a lot of the independents that seem to be calling us that uh, we've been working with over mm -hmm. the last few weeks, and it's uh, it's uh, it depending on timing. But I know the individual you talked to uh, is planning for the fall, I believe, for that yeah, shoot. Yeah, I believe it is in the fall. Yes. Yeah, uh, we don't have anything major in terms of uh, major uh, uh, feature films that we can announce at this time, though. That's what about television productions? Television. Uh, there's always lots of reality shows. Of course, the success of Pawn Stars has brought on the glut of uh, other reality <laughs> shows. So there are many. Um, but actually, it's funny, uh, you know, the success of a television show like Pawn Stars actually helps tourism. There was just an article in the RJ the other day about the uh, State Tourism Department, uh, State Tourism Museum, that uh, has attracted so much more business because of the show Pawn Stars. So lots of reality shows, even though some people don't like them, they do attract a lot of uh, a lot of business and a lot of tourism. And actually, film and tourism is a very interesting subject because it's something that's really tied together. We're, we're seeing around the world where destinations uh, 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 have become very, very popular as a result of movies. Lord of the Rings saw a 400% increase in tourism wow. uh, down in New Zealand, and they had all of the tours of uh, all of the areas for the Hobbits and uh, what have you, and even a little small town like Preston, Idaho, became very popular with an independent film, Napoleon Dynamite, and they still to this day have you know pr uh, Napoleon parades and wow. events going on. And, <laughs> and, and the hangover here. Hangover here. Oh, yeah, people yeah, yeah, come yeah. here and want to stay in the hangover suite at yeah, Caesars. Caesar's Palace. So yeah. it's, uh, it's something that really drives people, uh, that puts them on planes, that puts them in cars. Field of Dreams is still popular in Iowa from uh, a movie from the 1980s. Was that uh, Prescott, uh, Arizona? Uh, Pres no, Preston, I Idaho. Oh, Prescott, Idaho. Two yeah, different places. Preston, Idaho. Okay. 
Because yeah. they, they'll kill you if you say Prescott. Uh, 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 Prescott. Yeah, you got to say it just oh, right. I, oh, in Arizona. Yeah, okay. yeah you got to say it just right. Otherwise, you know, you're know you labeled as a foreigner. Oh, yes. So. Well, I know that the hotels also get involved in some of these television productions because I know that the Palazzo Venetian uh, ho- has hosted a couple times now Wheel of Fortune. Um, are you involved in any of those productions at all? Or? Absolutely. Yeah, they, a lot of the game shows and that, that have come here uh, start with us in terms of trying to find venues. And then uh, the... Uh, 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 properties have been very aggressive, I think, in trying to uh, make available. We've had several over the years. Let's sure. make a deal. And, uh, and Wynn had American Idol, and then uh, Venetian, like you said, Palazzo had mm-hmm. America's Got Talent, which was, uh, you know, the number one show in the summer. So, uh, and then, like Charlie said at the beginning, it's a huge boost when they use Las Vegas, uh, you know, in their title shot in right. Las Vegas. It brings people here who want to see the show. And right now, they have something going on at Bally's, I believe, that is one of the game shows going on there. Um, there's stuff shooting on private property all the time. The hotel. Yeah, it's amazing there's how many things and poker uh, shows, poker and shows, and oh, yeah. award poker, shows, and, yeah. You know, yeah. And a lot of fights. award shows. People, yeah, the yeah. fights. Well, um, we're about to wrap up here, and I would just like to say that um, I'd like to thank Ed Geocaris and I'm sorry, Ed Heron and Charles Geocaris and Don Lewis mm. Barnhart. God, for being here today. It gives me bumps in my goose. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you for having uh, the Nevada Film Office. We oh, really appreciate it. Yes. Um, this you. is Good your you. host, James Kelly, saying um, next we'll be here two weeks from now on Tuesday at 2 o'clock p.m. Um, next week will be Aspects of Writing with, with me, moi, and <laughs> <laughs> we're on KLAV 1230 AM on the dial and also KLAV 1230 AM.com on your computer. We rebroadcast on VegasAllNetRadio.com and you can log on, on to W www.aspectsofwriting.com to see the show's lineup. On the next show, I will have, and I know it says Aspects of Writing, but that page also carries behind the scenes, so not to confuse anyone. Um, on the next show, I will have a world-renowned uh, choreographer, dancer, and director, Tiger Martina, from the Vegas, Vegas The Show, located inside the Saks Theater at Planet Hollywood Hotel and Casino on the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, so until next time, this is Behind the Scenes with your host, James Kelly, reminding you, a dream is just a dream unless you make it happen. Bye, pumpkin pie. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>